Hey everybody, how's it going? Hopefully you're all having a great day. I wanted to make a follow-up video to last week's video on lifestyle creep. I wanted to make a video detailing how I conceptualize my personal finance to avoid lifestyle creep. Now this isn't the typical itemized budget where you take every transaction and you log them in an Excel sheet. I think that's extremely tedious and I had to do it for one of my managing personal finance classes and I absolutely hated the exercise. However, after doing that itemized budget exercise, I created a system that I find works for me and still keeps me in check but doesn't have me doing all the tedious work day to day. First, I'll define four key terms for that system and outline how they relate to everyday spending. From there, I'll discuss how your month to month spend relates with that. First, let's define some terms. The four terms are fixed non-discretionary, variable non-discretionary, fixed discretionary, and variable discretionary. Now that's a lot to throw at you at once, but let's break down what each of those words mean. In the example of fixed versus variable, this simply just covers is the cost going to be the exact same every month or is it going to vary from month to month? For non-discretionary versus discretionary, this simply refers to do you have the choice or do you have discretion to pay the expense? If you don't have the choice to pay the expense and you must pay it, that is a non-discretionary expense. If you do have the choice on whether or not you want to incur that expense, then it is a discretionary expense. Now let's use that knowledge to break down the four terms. First up is fixed non-discretionary. Fixed, meaning the cost won't change very much month to month, and non-discretionary, meaning that you do not have discretion on whether or not you can pay this expense. Key examples of fixed non-discretionary expenses are rent, car payments, tuition. The last example I'll give is something that I personally categorize here, and that is any type of saving that I'm doing for a specific goal, retirement, or just saving just cause. By making it a fixed non-discretionary expense, you move it from being, I'll just save whatever I have at the end of the month to I am consistently saving X amount of dollars every single month. This will prove helpful later on in the video. The next category is variable non-discretionary. Variable meaning the expense will change and non-discretionary meaning that you do have to pay these expenses expenses. You do not have discretion. Some examples of variable non-discretionary are gas for your car, electricity bill, any spending that you would typically do on groceries for the week. Note that we do not include going out to eat in the variable non-discretionary category. If you have a special circumstance where you are unable to cook food at home, or at least unable to do so cheaply, then cheap dining can be categorized as a variable non-discretionary item. The third category is fixed discretionary. Fixed meaning the cost does stay the same month to month and discretionary meaning that you do have discretion on whether or not you want to pay this or not. Some classic examples of fixed discretionary spending would be any gym memberships you may have and any streaming services that you're paying month to month for. This could be Netflix, Spotify, Hulu, and anything in between. You'll find that a lot of quality of life upgrades tend to fall into this category. And the final category, variable discretionary spending. Variable, meaning the cost does change, and discretionary, meaning you do have discretion on whether or not you want to pay it. Variable discretionary is the broadest category and is most often what people try to rein in when they think about classic itemized budgeting. It is also where I think the most energy and effort is lost when trying to control one's personal finance. Here is a visual representation of how I use these terms to conceptualize my personal finance. Whenever I get any sort of inflow, predominantly from my salary, I pay everything in these categories in this order. First and foremost, I make sure that all of my monthly fixed non-discretionary costs are covered. Once all of the fixed non-discretionary costs have been covered for the month, what is left of my paycheck now flows to the variable non-discretionary category. In this category, I will estimate my monthly spend and set that money aside for the entire month. With these estimates, I try to aim a little bit higher than I expect. That way, if I'm wrong, money will start to accumulate in this variable non-discretionary spending category. And finally, once all of those items are accounted for, whatever's left of my salary goes to paying for the fixed discretionary category. This ensures that I can maintain a certain level of quality of life that I wish to have. Now, if you'll recall, any savings for future goals, be that a planned trip or retirement or saving just because, was covered in the fixed non-discretionary category. This means that whatever of your salary is left is free for you to spend however it is you would like to spend it. You don't have to budget, you don't have to count line items because you know that all of the other three categories have already been covered. The money left is purely for fun. I think when most people do their best to try and rein in the variable discretionary spendings, they're not really focusing on key components of a modern day budget. If you're starting from scratch and you would like to use this concept in your personal finance, here's how you do it. I would go through all of your monthly spending 
and only categorize the first three categories worth of spending. Once you have this number, feel free to add in any sort of savings goals you would like to have. Make sure that the savings goal is broken out monthly. Once you have all of those things plotted down, add up that number, and that number is the new total for what you need month to month to maintain your current quality of life. If you are in a situation where you have no money left over or you are actually in a negative balance, here's what you'll do. You either need to reduce the amount of fixed discretionary spending that you have or slightly lower your savings goal, but try your best not to eliminate it entirely. Once you have done that and you find any money left over, that's all for you. Personally, what I like to do to help keep these buckets separate in my own mind is I have two accounts. One that I label bill pay account, which covers the first three categories of spending, and the second called my fun account, which is anything in the fourth category of spending being variable discretionary. Since I'm paid bi-weekly, every paycheck I move over to my bill payment account exactly 50% of my monthly quality of life spend. So let's say it takes $1,000 for you to live month to month with your current quality of life and you are paid bi-weekly, you would move $500 into that account on your first paycheck and 500 from the second paycheck. It is worth noting that for my own personal finance, these movements are to cover the next month's worth of spending. If you're currently living month to month, what I would recommend to be a good goal for you to start putting in your fixed non-discretionary spending would be to save up enough to pay for the next month's worth of quality of life expenses. This is personally what I have done. In an effort to chase that goal, feel free to save whatever is left in the variable discretionary category and move that over to your bill pay account. I hope you all found this helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I do address every single comment. I have personally found a lot of success with this, and I hope you do as well. I hope you all have a great day. Thanks.